Hello everybody, welcome back, and I am the Chornik, and today ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about Ash capturing Gengar, yes, officially, he has caught Gengar, I am so happy, this is fantastic, Gengar has been one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, my favorite Pokemon of Generation 1, he even managed to get in the top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time in 2020, so obviously a lot of people view Gengar as their favorites, so awesome ash has finally caught gengar his first ever ghost type pokemon we saw this coming for quite some time though ever since he appeared the first time and he wasn't officially gone it was still sticking around the institute we knew that he was going to be returning pokemon and that he was going to be captured by somebody right someone either koharu or go or ash and a lot of us obviously hoped that ash would get him because ash has never had a ghost type pokemon before and I was kind of worried that Go was going to capture him because, you know, Go did have a Gengar shirt when he was little. And he really did want to capture that Gengar. You could see it in his face, but he held back. He, he reserved himself and he was just like, fine, I guess I'll let Ash capture Gengar. But you could see he really, really wanted to. But uh, luckily, he decided to you know, stay back from this one because he saw that Ash really, really wanted him, really, really cared about him and stuff. So... Uh, Go was fine, like, okay, you know, I captured too many Pokemon, uh, I guess I'll let Ash capture Gengar or whatever. But Ash's team is all Generation 1 Pokemon. I mean, Pikachu, Mr. Mime, Dragonite, Gengar, I mean, pretty OP team, honestly. One of my favorite teams already because these are some of my favorite Pokemon, and they're fully evolved. I love Pokemon fully evolved. Thank you. Thank you. And it's kind of interesting that all of these captures are being fully evolved so far, but at the same time, it's kind of understandable. There not, might not be enough screen time to show Ash, you know, evolving his Pokemon. And it might not, you know, I don't think he needs to start from scratch per se. I think he should be capturing Pokemon that are already fully evolved, already really, really, really powerful. Okay, Gengar, Dragonite being a pseudo-legendary Gengar, he could potentially, potentially Gigamax, which that would be pretty interesting to see if... Honestly, if besides Pikachu, if we have a Gigamax Gengar, I could see that, you know, and if he ends up battling in other other tournaments, maybe other gym leaders in the Galar region. So that would be uh, fantastic to see, of course. As for his team so far, it's all Generation 1 Pokemon, but I do believe, and I know a lot of people believe, that Lucario is next, or Riolu. And then Riolu would be like that one Pokemon that he captures that actually will have like an evolution episode or whatever. Okay, so I'm still sticking to like the merchandising because Gengar, Dragonite, Mr. Mime, Pikachu, all on the merchandising, right? Okay. But Riolu is also on there, of course. So I'm going to stick with the merchandising. That's, I think, we need to pull from the posters. Whatever The Pokemon on the posters are the Pokemon he's going to get, in my opinion. Okay, maybe he'll capture way more than six. We don't know that yet. But he already captured four Pokemon in less than 20 episodes. It's episode 16. Captured four Pokemon already. And all of them are fully evolved. So <laughs> they're all powerhouses and everything. So fantastic. Gengar, like I said before, is his first ever ghost type Pokemon. I used to think Glalie was a ghost type Pokemon. So, but no, I think that was just the alternate version. So Glalie was just ice. But for the longest time, I thought that was Ash's first ever ghost type Pokemon. And Haunter, of course, was never caught by Ash. He just kind of followed him around, which always kind of bugged me because I loved Haunter because I loved Gengar, right? And I hoped that he would eventually get a Gengar from that Haunter. But of course, Ash ended up leaving that Haunter there and never like returning or whatever, you know, and never actually capturing it. And I was kind of surprised that he never captured considering he was following him around to help him with this gym battle. You'd think Ash, wouldn't it come through his mind? Hey, I should just capture this Pokemon, you know, in order to use it against Sabrina. But okay, whatever. I know a lot of people also said that he's a shiny, which I don't think so because shinies are more of a grayish purple. Whereas, I mean, they're, they're pretty similar. The original Gengar and the shiny Gengar. Uh, but the, the shiny Gengar is a little bit more of like a grayish, like a grayish purple or a lighter purple. And this one seems pretty dark purple to me. The only unique feature I see on it is its eyes, really. Its eyes are way redder than most Gengars. So I would say, like, that's the only, like, really unique feature on this Gengar. And his, like, size changes, like, every single scene. Sometimes he's massive. And other times he's, like, smaller than Ash. And then he's bigger than Ash. And it's just, like, his size, like, fluctuates. Which I guess, I mean, he is a ghost-type Pokemon. So he could, like, expand and shrink as he pleases. Before I get too carried on with that, 
Let's actually review the capture episode itself, the backstory of Gengar, okay? I, coming into this episode, seeing the summaries, I'm like, oh god, you know, it's this cliche again. He gets a Pokemon from every single region that's either abandoned its trainer or was abandoned by its trainer, okay? And, you know, we had Froakie and Snivy who abandoned their trainers, and then we had Charmander, Tepig, you know, Chimchar, who've all been abandoned by their trainers. This was just another one of those. And I felt like, okay... You know, this is just going to feel like a repeat, but I hope they kind of do something unique with it. So going into the episode, I knew like that trainer from the previews was its original trainer. Like I knew that right off the bat and like, yeah, Ash is going to capture this Pokemon because that's, that's like, it's the, the cliche and Ash always, always ends up getting that Pokemon that was like left by its trainer or whatever. So uh, I already knew right off the bat that Ash was going to get it once I saw the previews and I knew that that trainer was Gengar's old trainer course because why would he attack him and stuff like that but the backstory actually really got me and I went in thinking okay it's just, yeah it's gonna be sad or whatever but we all seen this before the thing about Gengar is that he's always smiling like his his normal face is is smiling like he's always looking malicious and you know he's always looking evil like and happy and, and sinister but deep down you know he's in pain and I think this could relate to a lot of people in real life where they, you know, they, they try to act like they're okay or they put on this face that they're all happy and, you know, like their life is great. Especially on like social media stuff, people act like they're all happy and stuff. But then like deep down internally, they're, they're not okay, obviously. You know, they're going through some stuff. And so I think a lot of people can relate to Gengar. So awesome points to that. But I think that's also what made it even sadder to me because like he you know, I felt so bad because his, his trainer left him there basically because he thinks that Gengar is bad luck and maybe this is something that Ash is gonna have to deal with later on but obviously we'll you know do a better job of it and you're not gonna leave Gengar you know he's gonna probably maybe find some bad luck in the future and remember that the trainer left this Gengar because of bad luck but I think Ash is gonna obviously find a way to to get past this or you know use it to his advantage maybe maybe giving you know the opposite trainer he's battling bad luck or something i don't know you know gengar might just be giving him bad luck because he maybe like curses him because gengar's pokedex entry even says that you know it would curse its own master it would like do things to them um slowly killing them even uh so it kind of it kind of made sense from pokedex pokedex entries its whole like nature is to be malicious and it like it's a ghost type Pokemon, right? Gengar is like an evil Pokemon almost inherently. So it kind of makes sense from that standpoint. And I could see almost why, you know, like trainer wanted to get rid of him. The problem is obviously is I feel like it does more evil if like the way he did it. Because even as a communication major myself, I was pretty pissed about the way he handled, like, their breakup or whatever, releasing him. Like, if you're going to go ahead and release a Pokemon because you don't like it or it's causing you issues or whatever. And this is honestly what, like, Paul honestly did a good job of, which was, like, be straightforward. Like, you know, obviously Paul was like, you know, you're not tough enough. You're not good enough for me or whatever. And that's it. And then obviously Chimchar was pissed about this, of course, but Chimchar got over it really quickly it was really really fast it was you know Chimchar was able to move on whereas Gengar like he was told that you know this trainer was going to come back you know and and had to sit there wondering when he was going to come back and and thinking everything was okay for three years like you do more evil to someone that you aren't straight clear with and they might even yeah obviously they're going to hate you more like later down the line because of how much pain you actually cause them by their confusion with your niceness and so it's, it's it's better like even like if you're like dumping someone or whatever it's, it's better just to be direct and straight up and not be nice about it or else you're you could just end up hurting the person more okay because now they're gonna still think about you basically thinking oh you know they were nice uh about it maybe they maybe there's still a chance blah 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 and it confuses people and so i feel like you need to be really direct and communication is so so vital and so with that whole like goodbye like you know trying to be nice like you're you ultimately are end up 
being more evil doing so. I would rather people just straight up say it, you know. If I was saying goodbye to a Pokemon for whatever reason, whether that Pokemon was, you know, evil or a personality, we just didn't work together, like, we weren't compatible with each other, the Pokemon was, like, evil and, you know, malicious and, or, you know, like, usually that's probably why I get rid of a Pokemon is because, you know, it's just disobeying and, I've tried very hard to, you know, bond with it, but it wants to do evil things or it has a different path. Maybe it wants to be a performer where I want to be a trainer or what, you know what I'm saying? Then maybe that's when I would be straight up with it. Like, look, like our goals aren't aligned. Uh, maybe you should go, you know, or maybe you should find someone else. Like, yeah, and end it there. Like, I, but no, of course the trainer didn't. And I think it was just way too much of a coincidence that the trainer, like, not only did Ash bump into him, while he was being cursed by Gengar, but he also like bumped into him and the guy said, oh, I thought I was done with, you know, bad luck when I got rid of the Gengar. Like you mentioned the Gengar when the guy you bump into is is cursed by the Gengar. Like I felt like it was just so much of a coincidence in both scenarios. Not only did he bump into the guy, but he also like, the guy also mentioned Gengar and which obviously pissed off Gengar and Gengar, you know, no longer liked the guy and that was it. Um, um, no, obviously no longer needed to stay at the Institute now that, you know, he knows that this trainer wasn't coming back and got pissed immediately. But understandable for plot purposes, they gotta do this in one episode. So obviously, Gengar needs to move on from his past trainer, so might as well just have his past trainer show up, you know, clarify that he doesn't like him, and then, move, you know, obviously Ash captures, captures Gengar by feeling bad for him, of course, and that's that. But one final thing about this episode, of course, is uh, just like the scenes with Gengar. I always, always kind of worried that Team Raku was going to capture him. And like the the Ghostbuster freaking reference that they had with the vacuum, like sucking Gengar into it was actually pretty funny. Like I like that they did that. That was pretty funny. Uh, but then Ash rescued him and then wanted him to be his Pokemon. And that's when Gengar like decided that, yeah, like I'm going to join this guy because he actually cares about me and seems to actually want me. But of course, we will probably see later on in the future, Ash and Gengar go through some struggle when Gengar obviously is slowly killing Ash because that's its nature or whatever. You know, it's it's slowly giving him bad luck or whatnot. So maybe Ash and Gengar would have to work through that somehow. Uh, so it would be really, really interesting how that relationship develops. But ultimately, the, the one final thing I want to say about this episode is like, although I hated that it was cliche and that it was another abandoned Pokemon that Ash ends up picking up, this this episode really hit in the feels like pretty quickly. And I didn't think like it would because I felt like we've seen this all before, but seeing him like alone like that, knowing that he was internally in pain, even though, you know, his face doesn't show it and seeing him alone just sitting on the stairs after his trainer like admitted that he abandoned him and everything like I oh my god it hit me like it hit me and I was like no no poor little Genki dude oh no and I was just like I just want to hug him I hope like Ash just takes care of him because that's just so sad and like seeing how he stayed three years at this institute and seeing him like look at the ground and get all excited when the door opened but it wasn't his trainer and then he just you know got sad or angry and, and stuff and like I feel so bad for him and I'm like shoot dang it why is this working on me that's how I felt in this episode ladies and gentlemen I believe I talked way too long about Gengar and its backstory but I think you all feel the same about it of course it was pretty sad and I think it's pretty relatable honestly so you guys can post in the comment section below your thoughts and feelings about this episode who do you think Ash is going to capture next? How do you think his relationship with this Gengar is going to go? Did you like the whole backstory? Did you tear up like I did? Tried to resist but couldn't? Oh my god, poor little Gengi. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I love your faces. Can't wait to see you guys in the next one. In the episodes to come, we do have Score Bunny probably evolving. Okay, because he's finding newfound powers. There's already been leaks of him evolving and stuff. So, on Go side of things... Looks like Score Bunny is going to evolve into a Raboot already. So, pretty intense, pretty awesome. And then maybe we'll have some Riolu episode in the future, of course, as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, I love your faces. Can't wait to see you guys in the next one. And peace off. Thank you very much. Poor little Genki.